What's going on, football fans? It's time once again for another solo rendition of the Pound for Pound. I'm your host, J.R. Clark, and today we're going to be talking about OTAs. OTAs wrapped up this week, uh, which is the three-day mandatory minicamp. Um, and from all we could tell, you know, everybody showed up. You know, everybody was a, a participant, which is a good sign. You know, that's what you like to see, especially with guys like, you know, Freeman, you know, potentially – in the last year of their deal, that's when players tend to like to hold out. So, you know, it looks like he's taking a page out of Julio's book and, uh, you know, participating, you know, showing that he wants to be a part of this team, which is good. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly run over some of the things that uh, uh, I've read and seen. Now, my, uh, my partner, Toby D, was up there with, his family earlier, you know, this week, you know, he he actually got to put, you know, eyes on players this week, which is really great. Um, I myself didn't get a chance to go up there. I probably won't go up until uh, training camp actually starts. So um, I encourage you to go check out his video if you haven't to, you know, to get his impressions of our players. Um, <clears throat> so uh, without further ado, let's just jump into it. Uh, some of the bigger things that have popped off has been uh, the readiness, I guess you could say, of uh, Duke Riley. Uh, you know, Dion, no, it was Devondre Campbell came in and said, you know, that Duke Riley was is far ahead of where him and Dion were this time last year. So that's a good sign. You know, that that's something you want to see. That's something you want to hear. You know, uh, a rookie coming in with already, you know, with a lot of, um, you know, playing experience, so to speak, uh, and seem to be, you know, ahead of the curve, which is nice to hear. Uh, obviously, Tat McKinley was, you know, not there. That's because, you know, he goes to the school out in California. They're on a quarter system, so they haven't technically graduated yet. So he can't be a part of uh, uh, any. NFL activities, but if you follow him on social media, you know he's in Atlanta now, so that's good. And uh, I know that the coaches have, you know, been in contact with him as far as like via Skype and stuff like that. So you know he has the playbook. So the difference is the onus is on him. You know he's not under the watchful eye of the coaches, so don't really know how much he's studied. You know you hope that he's gotten into his playbook good. Um, some of the other points coming out, it sounds like, um, uh, Tevin Coleman has added anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds of, of, uh, muscle. So that, that, you know, may allow him to be, you know, more of the battering ram, you know, type running back, uh, more of a, a physical runner. <clears throat> so that's, um, that's encouraging to hear, uh, Don Terry Poe made weight which is good, you know, it was his first official way in So now he can go cash a hundred-plus-thousand-dollar check. I mean, if somebody gave me a hundred-something-thousand dollars, I believe I could lose some weight myself. But uh, that, uh, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to do that. So the onus is on me. Um, you know, the Falcons have put out a couple of mic'd up videos of Steve Sarkeesian and uh, Marco Emanuel. Uh, our new OC and DC. I encourage you to go find those. I'm sure they got them on their website. If not, you can find them on social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Um, it seems like uh, Steve Sarkeesian is really connecting with the guys. You know, at least in that little video clip, as much as you could tell, it seems like guys might be a little bit more comfortable around him than they were around Kyle Shanahan, per se. And then uh, Mark Juan Manuel seems to be definitely more hands-on, like more active with the guys out on the on the field. I know uh, it's been said that Richard Smith was more of a classroom type teacher versus like being on the field hands-on. And you can definitely tell Mark Juan Manuel's all up in the, you know, all up in you know everybody's face with trying to to you know keep them going, which is good. I think that's more the style that Quinn's looking for, really. 
and his coaches is the uh, uh, more hands-on, more, you know, uh, like I said, you know, just, just more hands-on type of coaching. But um, with that being said, there really had, wasn't a ton to come come out of minicamp. There never really is. Uh, you get some decent sound bites from, from some players uh, here and there. Uh, Justin Hardy is apparently having a real good offseason. Uh, he missed one pass and then dropped, did some push-ups, and that was like by the agging of his wide receiver group, you know. So that's good to see that they're holding each other accountable. That's the kind of stuff you like to like to see, you like to hear about. Um, you know, that speaks to the standard that this team has, you know. So with that being said, uh, you know, we're entering the dead time. We're entering – the time of the off season where not much is going to come out. I mean, these guys, you know, left for OTAs and they they're going on vacation. You know, they're going to they're going to the beach. They're going to the lake house. They're going to the mountains. They're going wherever. You know, they this is their time to you know step away from football. So you know, my coverage might be a little light until training camp. Uh, I've got some things planned. Um, you may have to go to, to my other channel to check them out. I don't know if I want to bog this channel with some of the stuff that I got uh, planned because it may be more of a broad reaching, not necessarily focused on the Falcons. But <clears throat> needless to say, you know, keep an eye out for that. And like I said before, go check out Toby's video, um, you know, because he actually got to, to go to training camp. So he's got a different perspective. My, uh, my information is just coming from what we've seen and what we've read. I mean, all y'all have had the same access that I've had, so um, I'm sure y'all have read some of the same things. You know, to wrap it all up, the things I'm encouraged by or what I hear from, you know, about Duke Riley and the way our coaches are interacting with our players, I think that really goes a long way in, you know, taking this team – back to where we want to be and, you know, whole hosting that Lombardi trophy. I mean, just remember, Lombardi himself didn't win first time out. You know, they lost. So, you know, keep your head up. I don't, I don't think we're anywhere close to being done. But that's all I got for you. It's, uh, you know, simple tonight. So, as always, Falcon fans, rise up.